Hello my dear investors, in this video I'll show how I calculate and what I, data I put inside the balance sheet of a company. So I'm sure everyone knows a company has three statements, its income statement, its balance statement and the cash flows. So what's in the balance statement? So basically the balance statement is where the company is putting all its assets and all its liabilities. So the first one is current assets. So current asset is all the assets the company has in the next year. So let's say if it has cash, which is now, or if it has a short-term investment, or if it has accounts receivable that it's supposed to get in the next 12 months, that will be current assets. So I first I put in the current assets and then the total assets, which, which, which is all the assets of the company. And so assets could be inventory. It could be a PPE. It could be anything that's, that's worth is in an asset. So... So for the first thing, I put the current asset and the total assets. And then always I'd like to see what happens throughout the years. Are the assets growing or not? So this is for 2002. And then I jump 10 years to 2012, 2013. And then we see that in 2013, it went up the assets. The current asset went up 9%. So I don't really care how much the assets go up. The current assets go up in a year because they could use, use a huge amount of cash to buy something and the current assets will go down. So the ups and downs of the current assets in one year does make a difference. But the total assets, that's important. We want to see that the total assets are growing the whole time. The next part is, is PPE. So PPE is plant, product, and equipment. So the company, let's say, has real estate or it has a factory. It has a manufacturing plant. It has machines. It can have computers anything that's in um that's that's uh all the assets that are in the ppe would be included in so usually the company has it sometimes the companies would divide it into different kinds of ppe sometimes it'll just be put into one one number all the ppe together my next thing i put in is intangible assets now intangible assets would usually be two things will be goodwill and other intangible assets so Goodwill is when, let's say, a company acquires another company, let's say, for $100 million. <coughs> and the assets of the company, the tangible assets of the company are worth only $90 million. And the company paid for this, the parent company acquired the small company for $100 million. They paid an excess of $10 million more than the assets. So that's Goodwill. So this also goes into the, uh, in this, in the, in the balance sheet, it will go in as Goodwill. Now, there's a lot of different accounting rules. Is it amortized or not? I'm not going to get into all that. But I put in intangible assets um, uh, for two reasons. The first of all, I want to know how much is the tangible assets of a company. So I will take the total assets and I'll reduce, I'll deduct the intangible assets. And there's another reason why I do this. I like to calculate the return on the intangible assets. That's a video for an, on a separate video. So after I put in the PP, I put in the intangible assets. So it could be or goodwill or other intangible assets. Let's say a company buys um, a license or a permit and they paid for money, but it's, it's intangible. Or it could be trademarks, patents, all kinds of things that all go into intangible assets. So my next calculation would be the net tangible assets. So I'll take all the total assets and I'll deduct the intangible assets and then I'll get my number would be my net tangible assets. So as a value investor, if let's say I want to buy a company and I want to know if I'm buying a dollar for 10 cents, I'll have to um, calculate the tangible assets because the intangible assets, maybe they're worth a lot of money. But uh, when you want to buy a dollar for 10 cents, you're not including the intangible assets. You're looking for liquidation price. And the intangible assets aren't, they're not going to give the company anything. Maybe they would, but maybe they're not. So that's why you would very much want to know the net tangible assets. So this is all the part of the assets, the current assets, the total assets, the PPE, and the intangible assets. Afterwards, we get the liabilities. So liabilities is anything a company owns. It could be debt. It could be accounts payable. It could be all good for kind of things that the company is obligated to pay out. It could be deferred taxes. It could be all different kind of things. So the current liabilities is all the things the company has to pay in the next year. And the total liabilities is the, the total debt and everything together, all the liabilities the company, had, the company has. So again, we want to see, let's say, that the liabilities would be going down every year. Not necessarily. Sometimes a company would take on a huge debt to buy a company or to acquire something or to refine some, refinance something. So debt isn't, some, isn't always bad, but you'd usually you'd want to see a company growing without the need to grow its debt. 
And over here, I put in debt. Now, what I put over here is I don't want to take only the liabilities. I want to take only the long, the long term and the short term, the short term debt. I want to know how much debt the company has. So liability, liabilities could be uh, if a company bought products and they didn't pay for it yet, that'll be a liability. If they have to pay taxes, that'll be a liability. But I want to know how much debt the company has. And there's a few reasons for that, and one of them I'll uh, I'll show you later is when we want to know how much comp how much was it we how much th was invested in the company. One of the biggest ratios is return on invested capital. So the invested capital would be all the assets of the company plus the debt. The company acquired debt to to buy things, whatever it is. It could maybe they acquired debt to buy inventory. Maybe they acquired debt to to buy back uh, to give out dividends or to buy back shares or to buy another company. So the debt is part of the investment that was invested in the cap in, in, in the company so i put in debt besides the liabilities uh, interest paid is i just put it over here because i fixed out after all the ratios but that's basically how much money the company paid interest every year so if let's say a company took on 100 million dollars debt and they're paying 10 percent let's say so they're paying 10 million dollars every year so that'll be the interest paid so you want to know how much a company is paying interest the, one of the big things you'd want to check out is how much would be the return on how much time the company earns its interest if the company is earning 100 million dollars a year and they're paying interest of 50 million dollars a year that's a big problem because enough of the economy is going to go into a recession or anything the company any problem the company was get into they wouldn't be able to pay back the interest so it's very very important to look out how much times the company earned its interest how many times they earned it over and retained earnings is, is how much money was left inside the company so let's say a company uh when they sold out the stocks, they sold it for $100 million. And they took on debt for $100 million. And now the company has, they earned uh, $10 million. So the retained earning is what the money that was left in the company after all the investment. So if, let's say, a company, uh, they sold stocks for $100 million, And they took, let's say, debt for $100 million, And they gained, they earned $10 million. So the retained earning would be $10 million. If, let's say, the company gave out $11 million in dividends, so the retained earning would turn into a deficit of $1 million. So total equity is, you want to know how much is the company's worth, the value, everything together. That's all the assets plus all the liabilities. That will be the total equity of the company. And the shareholders, equi shareholders' equity is all the equity of the company. That means all the value minus the debt. So the difference between um, the total assets and the, and the shareholders' equity is the total assets is all the assets the company has. The shareholders' equity would be all the assets minus all the liabilities. And over here, I also like to put in net tangible equity, which means all the assets minus all the intangible assets. So that's basically the net tangible assets uh, minus all the liabilities. So that would be the net tangible equity. And total investment is, what well, you want to know this number is very important, is to know how much money is it was invested in the company so we'll take the shareholders equity which would be all all the the money that the company got from earnings or from 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 selling stocks or all, all that equity plus all the debt so total investment will be the shareholders equity plus all the debt so this is the ratio uh, this is the calculation we put in all the debt plus the shareholders equity and that would be the total investment i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much.